Hey, 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 what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, Bass Brothers Fishing DMV. Today's video is all about installing a transom mount trolling motor to the bow of the boat. We've got the Minn Kota Enduramax 55 pound thrust and we're gonna be moving it to the bow of the boat. At the rear of the boat, we'll have an Elko five horsepower electric motor. So there's so many ways to make this happen. What I wanna do today is show you how I'm gonna pull it off. I worked with Nate and came up with this contraption right here. So just got quarter inch aluminum plate with a piece of tubing welded to the top back plate right here this is going to support the rear of the mount also welded just as a quick demo for how this will work this is my center line of the bow of the boat and i have the center line marked on the mount so it's going to be roughly right here this will be supporting the rear of the mount now in order to make this work i will need to raise the height of this another inch what i'll do to raise this up is take some one inch tubing and bolt it onto this piece right here. That'll make this tall enough for the motor to actually sit on this properly and be usable. To install this to the bolt so that it will be solid, I'm gonna run at least two bolts right through here, through the gunnel, and then I will lock it in with lock nuts. And then for the rear of the mount, I will drill probably two bolts as well, right in here and lock this down as well. Too bad this can't be welded, but we ran out of time for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use stainless steel bolts for that. And similarly for the base, this will be mounted one bolt in each corner through the deck of the boat. But step one is to just prepare this and get this thing completely ready, which means go ahead and extend the height of this. Before I install this, I'll also paint this whole thing black. So that's the gist of it. In the end, I think this is gonna work out to be a really solid mount as long as everything goes according to plan. So let's get into it. Welcome aboard, let's do it. So I've got the tube held in place on top. I'll make two large holes on the top and then drill two smaller holes for the actual bolts to fit through so that I can bolt these two pieces together. So I'm now gonna drill out the hole that the actual bolts will pass through that will join these two together. I'm going right down the pilot hole with a smaller drill bit. What I'm using to bolt the spacer to the main mount are these Weathermax screws. These are from Lowe's. These are the quarter inch, 20 by three and three quarters, all right? So pretty short screw, but it's just long enough to be able to get this lock nut on there. I'll also be installing a washer in there as well. I think this is gonna be a good way to secure the spacer to the main mount. So I just bolted this down. Apologies, guys, my camera was not running. So as you can see in here, there's the top of the screw and the bolts are right underneath. I drilled out the top holes wider than the quarter inch I needed. That way I had space to work with when drilling into the next layer down here. I believe this is a 3 8 inch drill I use, a 3 8 hole here and here. And it worked like a charm. This is the quarter inch drill, made my holes down there, stuck my wrench underneath, held the nut in place, then just drilled in from the top. Finish it off with a combination of a screwdriver, and my wrench, because you really want to use the wrench, the torque from the wrench to get your final tightening of the screw. What I just did was cut a small piece of aluminum. This is 0.090, just to raise this up a little bit to make this level. I got my two marks here. Forget that one, that's a mistake. I've got my two marks where I want to drill through the top plate. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and drill out my holes in each corner of this base while it's easy for me to access it to drill down. This is probably the thickest aluminum I've ever had to drill through. So that is about three quarters of an inch. And I'm using black oxide, DeWalt drill bits. They work really well getting through aluminum. That is some thick stuff right there. All right, before I make my final tightening of this side, I'm gonna go ahead and drill this side out because as I'm tightening this up, it's making this side shift a bit. Here we have it guys. This thing is locked and loaded. See the bolts are in there, both sides. So I've already got my center line. Oh, my center line is right here. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanna know the general area where center is because I'm gonna be bolting in two 5 16 inch bolts right here in the front. So again, I'm trying to make this super secure, not so much because it's a heavyweight trolling motor, but you gotta prepare for accidents on the water, whether you're running a trolling motor, you hit a log or 
get too close to the bank and put a lot of pressure on your trolling motor and then on the gunnel rail of the boat. We all know what happens to all of us, no matter how much experience you have, you make mistakes. All right, there we go. All right, feel really good about getting this in here. Ah oh, man, excellent. The bolt went through nice and easy. I'm gonna go ahead and get the lock nut on the other side and tighten it up semi-tight. That'll help to keep everything stable while I drill out the second hole. All right, mission complete. This thing is in here very solid. When I shake it, it shakes the entire boat. So what I have left to do is going around, mark all four pilot holes, and then drill down into the deck. One thing I did want to point out is this is just a spacer because the trolling motor needs to sit on top of this. Without this, the trolling motor won't rest flush against the top part of this mount. All right, I think we're good to go. Let's let this dry overnight. Get a good 24 hour dry on this. All right, so it's been a few days and just wanna show you guys really quick the finished product for the trolling motor mount and it came out really good. The paint went on well. It has a nice glossy finish to it. Matches the gunnel rail of the boat. Even the screws that I painted black came out really well. All right, so that's gonna go on the front here and all blend together nicely. Now it's time to actually cut the access panel. I need to be able to access underneath the deck to secure the mount. So I'm gonna cut an access panel right here and it's gonna serve a few different purposes. One, it'll allow me, like I said, to secure that mount down. Two, that'll serve as my access for when I run the trolling motor cable down underneath and through to the battery. And three, for any potential future adding of a foot control trolling motor at the bow of the boat, that'll be the third thing. This will already be cut out. There's less work to do if you add a, a, a foot control trolling motor later to this boat. All right, it's all cut out and cleaned out. I can get my hand in there to reach under the deck to then secure in the trolling motor mount. Of course, when I'm done, I'll panel this off, put some uh, thin aluminum sheeting right here, rivet it in with some red paint, paint it up, make it look nice. All right, now we gotta do some electrical modding on this trolling motor. One thing we'll need to do is add a quick connect or a quick disconnect on the power cable to the trolling motor. Reason being is this motor will be taken on and off the boat. Again, it's going to be installed at the bow of the boat. So in order to make that convenient, I'm going to add this connection right here. I'll cut this right in the middle, have one side connected to the trolling motor, the other side going to the battery. So it makes it really easy to remove the trolling motor whenever you need to. So I'll be using these eight gauge butt connectors. This is eight gauge wire. I'll be continuing that theme all the way to the battery using eight gauge wire. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink tube this up, get this water tight. Came out really well. Everything is sealed up nice and tight. You can see the silicone oozing out. All right, so now we're just gonna repeat the process on the other end of the wire, the end that will connect to here. This side goes out to the battery. All right, a few days have gone by, probably more than that. I needed to pause the trolling motor install to work on some other things as well on the boat. So as you notice, this is all sanded. This is prepped for the hydro turf. And I also turf the floor, the subfloor of the boat and got a lot of the electrical wiring finalized. So we got the onboard charger installed down there. Everything is tucked away. So first thing I wanna do is take the bolts that I painted for the front, get those in and then get some quarter inch bolts, probably one inch or three quarter inch and lock this down in each four corners, drill out a hole, an access hole for the power cables to come through. And of course I cut this out to be able to access everything from underneath. 
All right, I've got my mount where it needs to be. I'll go ahead and drill out the hole for the power cables. I need about three quarters of an inch of a hole right there. Got our hole drilled out. And once I turf this over, I'll just cut a star across in the turf and that'll serve as a grommet to protect the wires and also preserve water from going down underneath. So we've got that access cut out. All right, next I'm gonna cut out a little access hole right here and this will be where I will bring the power cord out. I'm gonna put a piece of sheeting right here. Originally thought that I would just put a hole in that, but I don't wanna create any restrictions if you ever need to remove this panel. I want the power cables to be a standalone thing and not have any dependencies on any paneling or any other work that'll be done around it. So depending on your situation, you may not have to go through everything I'm doing. I'm doing a fresh build, so everything needs to be built out. But in your case, you may only need to mount something like this up front. Hopefully this may give you some ideas on how you could run your wiring all the same. You may just wanna run it all on top of the deck. In this case, I wanna make sure everything is as neat and clean as possible. One of the things I like to do is just hide the wiring or cables as best as I can. I've got it completely tightened down. All four bolts on the deck are tightened from underneath with a lock nut and I retightened the front as well. Next will be to get the trolling motor on here, get the electrical connected to it. I also have to reverse the tiller handle on the trolling motor, so I'll show you how to do that as well. And this goes for anyone who wants to move their tiller handheld trolling motor to the front of the boat. I'm gonna go ahead and put the trolling motor on here and give this thing a little test run. I have not reversed the handle yet. All right, and right now this in this position, it's, it's bearing the full brunt of the weight of the actual motor and it's not moving. I mean, it is very solid, barely shaking. It's actually shaking the boat because it's on there so good. So I'm just connecting the quick connect cables that I hooked up. Ah, oh, excellent. All right. Everything is working. Wonderful. Forward and reverse. So I made all my connections right. All my wire connections are working successfully. I will leave a link below of this connect that I'm using right here that I cut the original trolling motor wire about halfway. So this will be pushed down in here pretty much down to this part right here. I just want this plastic piece to be sticking out so that whenever you're ready to go, just reach down, plug it in and you're good to go. So now we just need to flip the trolling motor handle to the other side. And to do that, you, it's very simple. You just have to loosen a bolt on the back side of the motor and the way this Minkota is the lock nut on this side is actually held in place so i don't have to hold it on both sides i can just unscrew it on one side and then turn it around and then screw it back in so i'm actually going to take this off and work on it on the table that way i can get a better angle on getting the screw back in all right now i got a better view of the screw so what i found is it's easier to slide that little spacer that black spacer in first and then slide the nut through and hold the lock nut in place again it grips itself so you don't you don't need a wrench on this side it'll hold it in place i just put my finger right here just to hold it in place and then screw it in. And that worked out a lot easier than how I was just doing it. All right, just hand tighten that and that's done. So in the end, your tiller handle is facing the direction that your trolling motor will go, okay? Your prop is in the back, your trolling motor is facing that way and will propel you that way as you stare from the bow of the boat. So this is done. That's how you do that in case you didn't know. Share a little tidbit along the way. So I can't be more pleased with how this turned out. Rock solid mount. This is all aluminum, so it's lightweight, but yet very strong. All stainless steel hardware, locking it in place, both in the front, along the gunnel, and to the actual deck of the boat. Can't wait for this whole project to be done. And if you're interested in full John Boat conversion videos, link at the top of the screen to the full playlist to this John Boat Bill Alumacraft 1232. But yep, motor's ready to go, mount's ready to go. Hopefully this video helps someone else who's curious or trying to figure out exactly how they wanna do it. You could try to fabricate this yourself, I suppose. This is quarter inch aluminum. This is really a prototype coming out of Nate's shop. And I did a little modification right here, just raising this up another, I think inch and a half right there. You know, I would highly recommend something like this as opposed to doing something that might damage your boat. Try to figure out something that works out good for you. Contact Nate, Nate Custom Boats. He makes all kind of custom things to fit your boat. So this works for this boat, may not work for your boat, but contact Nate and he'll work out 
got something just for you.